mailbag time. I've got a bunch of packages here. I've actually got loads of packages. I've got about 20 of them. So I'm going to split this into two mailbags. We'll just do 10 this time, 10 for the next one. I'm still miles ahead on these things. Let's get stuck into it. So we've got some L7908CVs. So these are negative 8 volt linear regulator ICs. Now I actually found that these are getting harder to get. These kinds of regulators. Because everyone's going service mount these days. I need these kinds of parts doing repairs to older equipment like I do. You know, you know the test equipment repairs I do. So I actually do need to have these older parts. I decided to buy a bunch of them because I was realising that they starting to get to be a bit rarer. So if you need some of these regulators and you can't find them, it's because I bought them all. Alright, these are a bunch of modules for something, I don't know what. <laughs> what did I buy? So these are 6 volts to 30 volts input, apparently. And it says output there. 50 milliamps, 100 milliamps, 200 milliamps, and 300 milliamps sections down this side. I think these were lithium charge controllers. Well, it could have been nickel hydride charge controllers. Let's check out the links down below, because I will have links down there, and they will tell you what these things are about. So check those out. All right, that's what the back is. Nothing really on the back there. I'm pretty sure these were just current-controlled charge regulators. Now, this is what I got for repairing a piece of test gear, which takes batteries normally, has a battery pack. Also runs of AC, and the AC is supposed to charge battery up, but the battery pack was no longer in it. This thing's 60 years old. I need to replace the battery pack, and I was going to do that, but I realised I needed a constant current charge source, so I could control how much current is being used to charge the batteries up. And there's lots of different options doing that, and I realised no, I could just buy some little modules as well, so that's what I've got these for. So I don't actually know what this is. Not yet. It's heavy. Ah, now I know what this is. It's a square. Well, actually, it's an L shape, but you know, it's, you know, yeah, you know. <laughs> and then in here, there'd be another one. It is. It's a bigger L. So, what prompted me to get these? When I was working on my Ender 3, I was doing the Z access upgrade. Well, I, I did put dual Z motors on it to keep the uh, gantry basically the is it the X or the Y I can't remember anyway so it keeps it all level and, and is powered on both sides and tend to twist and gives you better accuracy now what I was doing I actually just try to bodge up and get a level I just measured it and that sort of stuff I'm trying to get things square and what have you I realised it would be nice to have some little squares because I've got big squares like a big for like woodworking kind of thing I don't have little ones so I thought I'd get some little squares because there's been many times I actually wished I had some small squares not to be confused with a small cube <laughs> Now, the thing with squares is you have to make sure you don't confuse a square with a cube. You have to make sure you don't confuse a square with a cube. So obviously these have got multiple uses. You can do a vertical check that way off a bed. You know, you can do it that way around which you want, but it's got the base there. You've also got the inside angle as well, which is why there's a little cut out there so you don't have a corner which stops it from seating nicely. That's why I do that. A little relief. So you can actually check the angle along the outside. So you can put this around something. Really cheap, these were not expensive. This is a 150 by 100, and this one is a 50 by 40. Might be even says on the packet, too, but anyway. But yeah, if you're interested in a bit of metalwork sort of stuff or doing kind of mechanical kind of stuff, then maybe these would be interesting. You can get different ones, you get uh, 45 degrees and stuff like that as well. I'm not quite there yet. So these are some little rods for cleaning out soldering irons. There's three of them in there. Different sizes. Well, I've got this one here for my Jabe soldering iron. And I actually lost it the other day. I was vacuuming up and I vacuumed my desk to get rid of some of the dust and stuff like I can, you know. Or clicks around the edges, we around bits of equipment. Later on that day, I went, oh, where's my cleaner gone? It got vacuumed up. <laughs> so, luckily I managed to fish it back out. But I made me realise I really need to get some spares. Here's a pack of spares. And these actually weren't that easy to find. Anyway, but links for these things down below. If you've got a desoldering gun or a desoldering station, you know, which is you know a vacuum desoldering one, then you probably want to get yourself some of these and have some spare ones. So check those links out down below. Also, say that to Julian for me. Click subscribe right now, quick, before you forget. That's his fault. Blame Julian. Well, these actually arrive really quickly. So these are some iPhone cases, iPhone 6S and iPhone 6S Plus. These are Otterbox-esque. They're not actually Otterbox ones, they're just very similar. But they're actually fairly good quality still, even though these aren't like the original ones, these are knockoffs, I suppose. 
clones. They actually work quite well, they're actually reasonable. So my wife's one, she actually had an original auto box and the actual rubber is all perishing around the sides, it's all stretching and it's just tearing and stuff like that. So it's basically starting to fall apart now. So that's what she had and so I needed to replace it. And the bell clip one's handy too, having spare ones for her phone. So she can put a new case on hers, keep it all nice. I mean these are cheap, these aren't expensive at all. I mean this is not quite as good as a real auto box, but they're close. And this one here is for my phone, which is a 6S Plus. You think, oh, why are you using 6S or 6S Plus? These are old phones. Because they've got a headphone socket. And I use my headphone socket every single day. I don't mess around with dongles or you know, plug-in adapters and all sort of rubbish. No. <laughs> or be able to listen to headphones or charge it. Choose one or the other. I think you can actually get dongles which do both now, can't you? But yeah, it's just... So my one here, I actually broke my holder the other day, the actual belt clip part. It's the same as this, basically. I'll show you this one. So I was actually doing some work on the car and as I, I had the phone on my hip as I often do and I caught the phone on something and, and this bit's been quite worn anyway I've had it for a while and it's getting quite worn it's getting a bit floppy and as I pulled sat down it caught this edge and it broke this clip off and then this bit fell to the ground but phone's unharmed because it's a reasonable case it was only you know a couple of feet up a foot up or so it wasn't very high but uh, anyway so I need to get a new holder for mine so I did actually have one spare, so I've used that. No longer have a spare. So now I've got a spare. Always have spares. Always. So we've got an Enema 14 Connect catalog. I'll have a look through that later on, could be an interesting read. Haven't had seen one of those for a while. And it's capacitors. Hold oh, on. Again, blame Julian. It's always a capacitor. So these are some axial capacitors, 10,000 microfarad, 16 volt. They're some big boys. I have a 10,000 microfarad drawer, well, reserved for one, not marked yet. These will go in there, just like that. Well, obviously without the bag, you know what I mean. Do you get that sense of deja vu? Do you get that sense of deja vu? Do you get that sense of deja vu? Another one, I don't think I need to. More capacitors, 10 microfarad, 25 volts. These read off the parts. Not that exciting. Next. We've got a little keyring. Thrilling. Cloud Ray Industrial Solutions, apparently. And here is a lens. Diameter 20mm, ET 2.0mm. Focal length 101.6mm, so 10cm, basically. It's coating as well. What did I get this for? I mean, what it was. I can't get into the case. Oh, it's because it's got tape on the side of it. I was going to play with this lens. So now, people which have seen these lenses around might know what this is for. Or this kind of lens at least, not necessarily this specific one. Now, what you can actually use these lenses for is to improve the focal distance on your thermal camera. So, you can actually put this on your thermal camera in a, in a holder of some kind. You can then get a much closer view using that thermal camera. Instead of being, you know, 30 centimeters away so we get a focal distance and alignment, you could be 5 or 10 centimetres away. In this case, this is 10. I thought I might just get one of these and have a look at it and see if it's worth looking at or not. I don't know. I think I've got a couple of other ones as well. I don't remember. It's something to play with, isn't it? They weren't that expensive. It's about 20 bucks, something like that. Not expensive. <laughs> right, this is what's arrived. So a nice little anti-static bag. Obviously, just convenient for them to use. Because it doesn't really matter. We have some N calibration kit stuff. So we've got an open, which has got no pin inside. You have a short, which joins the outer to the inner, and we have a load, which should be 50 ohms for the centre, for the centre pin to the outside. So these are for my V&A. I don't own a V&A, I have an SSA. Actually, well, yeah, um, yes, a V&A. Don't ask. No, seriously, don't ask. Okay, go on then. Well, let's have a look at this thing. The load is obviously the one we're really interested in. Is it really 50 ohms like it's supposed to be? Let's find out. Stick the probe there. Let's just stick this on the outside like that so we can see what the lead resistance is. About 0.2 ohms or so. Put down the centre pin. What do we get? <music> 51. It's a 51 ohm resistor, not a 50. It's not quite right. It should be 50 ohms. Is it close enough? Eh, probably. But, it's not what it's supposed to be. 
Well, that's what's supposed to be in here. Click subscribe right now, quick, before you forget. So I've got a USB-C cable, 100 watt rated apparently, with power delivery specifications. A Robe to be us. Mm. <laughs> Robe to be us. Oh, interesting. So a charger here, which is just an inline charger. It's got the correct plug. It's got the correct insulation on the plugs, even. No earth pin, but it's a isolated supply anyway. In theory, yeah. Okay. Earthing would have been nicer. I like the earthing. But that's 18 watts quick charge and power delivery 100 watts apparently. Don't forget a bit links down below for these things. I always put links if I can, but this tells you the various voltages it can do and the various configurations it will automatically switch to, depending on what your device asks for. I don't actually have anything which could do this kind of function, that's why I got this. You never quite know what you're going to need in the future, and if you don't have one, it's probably uh, worth investing in it. If you know you're going to use it one day, why not? And then I've got this 156, that's awfully precise, <laughs> 156 watt one, which is power delivery free, PPS, and quick charge 4 apparently. So there's the info on the back of it. All the various configurations and outputs you can do. It's got two ports, two power delivery, two quick charge. I'll open it up and show you in a second as well. Same brand, Road to B Us. A Road to B. Mm, interesting. I haven't come across them before, but I mean, the quality looks okay. Nice enough enclosure. Looks okay. Looks like a reasonable quality. And there's the specs again on the side as well. They should be the same as what's printed on the box. You'd hope so anyway. So it's the 3 amps of 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts. And 5 amps at 20 volts PPS as well. Not familiar with PPS one actually. Obviously 120 watt max and that's configuration, quick charge outputs. I'm not that familiar with this process, so I don't have any equipment which actually uses quick charge or it. Actually I think I've got one thing. I've got the Miniware MHP30, which is a little 30mm square hot plate that runs off a USB-C and it's not 5 volts, so that needs higher voltage. So I think that might be quick charge on itself. On that particular device. I think that might be the only thing that actually have which uses it. At least I've got these things now for when I do actually need them. I've got two because I always have redundancy. I always have spares. Check the links out down below. Subscribe if you're not subscribed over there. Page your support link over there if you want to help me to buy things from our bag or bits of test equipment to repair to do videos about. Catch you later.